Now let's come with three cases of understanding the scale factor. One is k greater than one, k equal to one, and k less than one. Are the three different cases which we're going to study through the scale factor. Now when it comes to the scale factor, we have already identified a scale factor to be continued from the previous session. It is AB by A dash B dash equals BC by B dash C dash and AC by A dash C dash which is equal to the scale factor K is what we have identified for two triangles ABC and A dash B dash C dash. So let's take case one which has k less than 1. So when this value of k is less than 1, then each of this will be less than the other side. So k less than 1 implies my AB, the length of AB is less than A dash B dash as I can clearly see here and my length BC is less than B dash C dash and my length AC is less than A dash C dash. So what do I understand from this concept of AB less than A dash B dash? That means the length of AB is smaller than the length of A dash B dash. Therefore, when I convert this into a triangle, I understand that the triangle which I consider originally is smaller than the triangle which I consider in the second stage. In similarity, the original triangle is smaller than the triangle which is enlarged. Therefore, for k less than 1, I get this increasing, the object increases or enlarges. When k is greater than 1, it diminishes. It, this object will be smaller than this because of its size being greater. This is how we understand the case 1 where triangle A dash, B dash, C dash is enlarged for k less than 1. One is how I conclude case one. So the second triangle A dash B dash C dash is enlarged for k less than one is case one. Now let's take the second case of k equal to one. So if k equal to one implies exactly when I substitute equal to one here, each of the ratio here gives me A B equals A dash B dash and my BC equals B dash C dash and my AC equals A dash C dash is how I get the three sides equal. That means the object neither increases nor decreases, neither enlarges nor compresses so that I get the same object. Therefore, K equal to 1 implies the object has retained its shape in this manner is how we understand. That means when k is equal to 1, the two triangles are congruent. This is also one of the thing. I can say k equal to 1 implies the two triangles are congruent. Similarity reduces to congruency. This is how we understand the difference. For k equal to 1 is what we understand as case 2 of scale factor. So let's take the case 3 of the scale factor where k is greater than 1. So in this case, k greater than 1 clearly reduces the three ratios equated to k as AB, the length AB is greater than the length A dash B dash. One of the side is greater. Similarly, the other side also is greater than. It's enlarged. And thirdly, AC is greater than A dash C dash. That means each of the sides of the original triangle are greater than the triangle which is obtained in its similarity. That means the triangle diminishes for the original triangle. Therefore, when I have k greater than 1 implies this is ABC and this similar diminishes to the original triangle. So this is a diminished image of this, is how we understand when k is greater than 1. Because each of the sides of this is greater than this, therefore it makes the object reduced in size. 
That is how we understand for the case three, k greater than one. So each of the three cases have their own understanding of the sizes of similarity of two triangles where for k less than one, the triangle, the original triangle is smaller than the triangle which is enlarged, that is A dash, B dash, C dash. For k equal to one, the two triangles are in equal size, that is the two triangles are congruent to each other. When k is greater than one, I get a diminished image of the original triangle ABC where it shrinks or compresses with all its sides reducing in size. Each of the sides are reduced in size to the original sides of the given triangle. This is how we understand all the three cases connected with scale factor. So with this, we understand clearly that scale factor has a very important role in understanding to what extent the object is enlarged or diminished using the value of the scale factor. Say, my, for example, I have k equal to 2. So k is greater than 1. So when k is 2, each of the length doubles twice. That is, when I have k equal to 2 here, that means I get AB is twice A dash B dash. That is, each of the side is double to this. Therefore, as the value of k increases, the object size diminishes to that extent. Now, as the value of k decreases, the object size increases as compared to the original triangle. In each case of this, for example, k equal to implies each of the side is twice of the image size or each of the side A dash B dash is half of the original sides. So this will be half of this when k is 2. If k is 100, the, this side will be 100th of the size of each of the sides of the given triangle. That means larger the higher the value of k, smaller is the triangle, more it diminishes is what we understand in the concept of proportionately increasing value of k. So lesser the value of k, more larger and larger is the image of the similar triangle is how we understand between the value of k and its enlargement connected with the value of k. Now let's see one of the most important theorem connected to the similarity of triangles and more with its scale factor, which we have discussed recently in the session. Now coming to the most important theorem called the basic proportionality theorem, which is also referred as Thales theorem. Both are the same. So the basic proportionality theorem or Thales theorem has its own statement. So let's see what the theorem states about. The statement of the basic proportionality theorem or the Thales theorem. If a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle, so the first statement is if a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle such that it intersects intersects the other two sides at two distinct points. Two distinct points. Then the theorem says that then that line divides the other two sides in the same ratio. This line divides those two sides in the same ratio is what is basic proportionality theorem with its statement. So let's read the statement once again to understand each of its contents more clearly. Now the basic proportionality theorem, which is also referred as Thales theorem, has the statement, if a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle 
such that it intersects the other two sides at two distinct points. That is, when I draw a line parallel to one side of a triangle, such that that line, which is parallel to the third side, is cutting the other two sides at two distinct points, then the theorem says that that line divides those two sides in the same ratio, which we are talking about these two sides in the same ratio. So let's understand this mathematically drawing a triangle because understanding of the statement of the theorem is very important more than the proof itself. So let's understand the basic proportionality theorem by just drawing a triangle ABC. Now, for this triangle ABC, I have three sides, AB, BC, and CA. Now, the theorem says, if a line is drawn parallel to one side of a triangle, so let me choose the one side of a triangle as BC for which I'm drawing a line parallel. Therefore, if I draw a line parallel to BC, it can be anywhere along this triangle, but the condition says that you have to draw a line parallel to one side of a triangle such that it intersects the other two sides at two distinct points. Therefore, I can draw a line parallel to this only between this A and BC. Therefore, let me draw a line parallel to BC. This is the line which I draw parallel to BC in between this. Now, because it intersects the other two sides AB and AC at two distinct points, let me mark the points as D and E. Now, this line which is parallel to the third side BC, one of the side BC, is intersecting the other two sides at D, cutting AB at D and cutting AC at E is what we understand from the statement. But the most important property of the statement is that the basic proportionality theorem says that for a triangle ABC, if I draw a line parallel to BC such that it cuts one of the side at D and one of the side at E, then the statement says that it divides, this line divides the other two sides in the same ratio. That is, this line divides these two sides in the same ratio is what is about basic proportionality theorem. That is, in case of this, what do you mean by divides in the same ratio? That means AD by DB will be equal to AE by EC. The ratio will be same. That is, AD by DB is equal to AE by EC is what is about the basic proportionality theorem, the proof which we are going to see in the continued session. For this conditions, we have to prove the basic proportionality theorem which states that they divide in the same ratio, that is, AD by DB must be equal to AE by EC. So let's see the proof of BP or the basic proportionality theorem, the Thales theorem. Now to start with the proof of the theorem, it is a common practice that a theorem always starts with the given conditions, then the mentioning of what is required to be proved, and then finally any constructions which we need to make, and hence we come out with actual proof. So we always start the theorem with the given conditions of the statement. Now the statement of the basic proportionality theorem clearly says that for a given condition, for a triangle ABC, I have DC. For triangle ABC, line N is parallel to the side BC. And in this case, if I take the diagram I have here, A, B, C and a line L which is parallel to this cutting the points D and E on A, B and E, C is parallel to the side B, C and also I have line L cuts the side A, B at D. So we see that line L cuts the side A, B at D and 
the same line L in turn cuts the side AC at E. So this is all the given side at E. Now indirectly I can say that DE is parallel to BC because DE is part of the entire line L. Therefore this is parallel to this is what we have and then for this given conditions I need to prove that the line divides in the same ratio of the other two sides that is AD by DB is equal to A by EC. So this is required to be proved RTP the abbreviation for required to prove. So in this case my condition what I need to prove is AD by DB is equal to AE by EC is what I am going to prove. But before I prove, we need to make any constructions which I need to proceed with. So the two basic con constructions which I am going to make in this given problem, one is I join D with C and B with E is one of the construction I make and I draw a perpendicular from E to AD which is this and drop a perpendicular from D to E to AD and D to AE which is this which I call as F and G is how I understand the perpendicular concept. So coming to the construction for the theorem there are two basic constructions I made one is joining BE and CD join B and E and C and D separately. So I join them together so that I get B, E and C, D as the line segments. Similarly, my second construction here is that I drop a perpendicular from E to A, D which is F. So draw E, F which is perpendicular to AD and DG perpendicular to A and DG perpendicular to A is are the two basic constructions I make in this basic proportionality theorem. Now once I have done with given part and the required to prove part and the construction comes the actual proof. So let's prove the basic proportionality theorem from the three basic conditions out here. Now let's see the proof of the BP theorem, the basic proportionality theorem. Now in this case I have few of the constructions which I have made. Now initially I am going to consider triangle ADE. So in triangle ADE what do I observe? Now in this triangle ADE, I want to find area of this triangle ADE. So area of triangle ADE is nothing but half into base into height. Therefore, for this triangle, if I take the base as ED, if I take the base as AD, I'm sorry, then the height is EF. Therefore, area of triangle being half into base into height will give me half times if the base is considered as AD, then the perpendicular height EF will be its respective height. Therefore, half times base which is AD and the height which is EF is what I get for area of triangle ADE is what I get in its comparison. Similarly, I take the triangle BDE. So when I take the triangle BDE, let's see what its area is. So in triangle BDE, if I wanted to find area of triangle BDE is again with the formula half into base into height. But as I clearly observe the triangle BDE, this is the base and this is the height, the height which is outside of the triangle. For this triangle, the height is outside because I cannot draw a perpendicular in this obtuse angled triangle. For an obtuse angled triangle, 
the height always lies outside the triangle. Therefore, if I take this as the base, then height is EF. Therefore, for triangle BDE, half times the base, which is BD, and the height, which is EF, is what I get as the area of triangle BDE. Similarly, for these two triangles, if I wanted to find the ratio of area of triangle this by this, let's see what exactly I get. So area of triangle ADE, if I denote with triangle ADE, and area of triangle BDE, if I denote with triangle BDE, or if I just write area of, then in this case, clearly I get area of triangle ADE is substituted for the simplified value. So this would be nothing but half times AD times EF and the denominator is area of triangle BDE which is substituted for whole of this which comes out as half times BD times EF is what I get. Now, as I see here, I have the common terms half and half and EF and EF, which can be cancelled out there since the side is non-zero. Therefore, the remaining is AD by BD, which I finally get for the area of the triangle ADE by area of triangle BDE is what I get as the ratio. Similarly, I would like to consider the triangle ADE and this triangle and see what I get in the similar manner. So in the second case, I consider this triangle and this triangle with the height as BG instead of EF. And let's see what exactly I get from this triangle and this triangle, which I'm going to consider in the next case of continued proof of BP theorem. So again, let me consider triangle ADE. Therefore, we consider triangle ADE but in this case, if I wanted to find area of triangle ADE, then it is nothing but half into base into height. But in this case of the second case, I take the base as E and the height as DG. So when the base becomes E, its height will not be EF, but it will be DG. So the height changes according to the base of the triangle. So in this case, if I take area of triangle ADE, then this is half into base into height, which comes out to be half times base, which is AE, and the height, which is DG. So that this is the area of triangle ADE. Similarly, if I take the triangle DCE is the triangle which I considered, which was the previous triangle, BDE. So in triangle DCE, I want to find area of triangle DCE. Now in this triangle DCE, my base, if I take as EC, then its height is respectively DG. Therefore, in this triangle, if I consider the base EC, then immediately its respective height is DG, which is outside of the triangle because that triangle is also an obtuse angled triangle. So its height lies outside the triangle. Now in this case, I got the two cases, then I consider area of the first triangle which I have obtained here divided by area of triangle, the second triangle that is DCE which I get by substituting each of the cases. For example, here, my area of triangle ADE, which is half times AE times DG by area of triangle DCE, which is half times EC times DG, which on substitution reduces to the right-hand side. Now, similarly, I can see here the half and the DG gets cancelled so that it reduces to AE by EC. I take this as equation 2. So I got two of the equations. One is equation 1, which I obtained in the previous case, and this is equation 2. Now from this, let's see how the common ratios are same. 
So assuming that if the left hand sides of equation 1 and 2 are equal, then indirectly I can say the right hand sides are equal by transitive property. When the left hand sides are equal, equally the right hand sides will be equal is what I conclude with. Therefore, let us show if the left hand side of the ratio of area of triangles here is equal to that as obtained in equation 1. Now, as I clearly see here with the two triangles, let us see for their equal areas through some mathematical properties. Now, let us consider the first triangle in the numerator which is ADE. So, as I clearly see that a triangle is equal to itself in its area. So, every object is equal to itself in the law of nature. Therefore, triangle ADE is equal to triangle ADE because this is same triangle because I consider the same triangle both on left hand side and right hand side. Therefore, since same triangle, this triangle is equal to this triangle out there. Now, similarly, let me consider these two triangles BDE and CDE. Now, since two triangles on the same base and between same parallels are equal in area, as you can see, if I have two triangles which are on the same base and if they are between same parallels, these two are equal in area is the mathematical property. Therefore, triangle BDE and CDE with the same base DE and between the same parallels L and BC are also equal in area. Therefore, triangle BDE. So, therefore, as I see the two triangles, triangle BDE, as I see here, is equal to triangle CDE because of the most important mathematical property which says that triangles on the same base and between same parallels are exactly equal in area. Therefore, the reason here is that since triangles on same base and between same parallels are equal in area. is what I get when the two triangles are taken on the same base and between same parallels. Therefore, with these two areas being equal, therefore, I get area of triangle ADE by area of triangle BDE, which I took in the first equation, and area of triangle ADE, which I took in the second equation with that of CDE, are equal, since these two are equal since from 1 and 2, I again get that I have this ADE by BDE triangle which had the sides as AD by DB, AD by DB which I got from equation 1 which is equal to AD by EC from equation 2 are equally the same because this is equal to this implies this equal to this since by transitive property of equation 1 and 2 is what proves the basic proportionality theorem because when one side is parallel to the one of the line drawn parallel to the third side will divide the other two sides in the same ratio. Hence, the basic proportionality theorem is proved or the Thales theorem is proved for a triangle ABC with one of its side being parallel to the line L, divides the other two sides in the same ratio by the theorem.